One of the most underrated video game systems of all time has to be what's playing behind me here, the Sega Master System. This thing, you know, Nintendo fanboy. I had the NES, the Super NES, the N64, the GameCube. I have owned every single Nintendo home console. But I still love the Master System. It sounds great, it looks great. It is, I dare say, a better looking system than the NES in a lot of different ways. Now, I didn't have one as a kid, but my friend Kyle, I remember when I changed grade schools, I got to be friends with him, he had one, and it was so good, it blew me away. This thing has games built into it. That just blew my mind when it, the worm thing that like the Nokia phones eventually got later on. You know, we played, hang on, we played so many different games. I remember we played Rocky quite a bit too. I'm glad to have one in my collection now. And one of the cool things that Sega ended up doing was they added the ability to play Master System games into the 16-bit generation with both the power base converter for the Sega Genesis and the Sega Mega Drive. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking out what we have going here today. I really do appreciate it. What I wanna know down in the comments, did you ever have a Master System? Did you ever have a power base converter? Did you ever get to play any of the games in this amazing library? Now, I mentioned the power base converter. It is a terrific unit that essentially, it's a Master System all in one that plays through your Genesis or your Mega Drive. It'll play both cartridges and kind of the hue card looking things that Sega came out with as well. Now, here in 2022, they've gotten to be stupid expensive. 200 bucks and more for a complete inbox unit. Loose, you're looking at least $100. And it's one of those things that, you know, you can actually get a master system for less than a power base converter, which is kind of weird to think of. Now, I was perusing on eBay recently because, well, quite honestly, I was looking for a power base converter. I was considering picking one up. And then I found this little guy here. This is called the Master Drive. And what it allows you to do is play your Master System games through your Mega Drive or your Sega Genesis. Now, we do have a JVC XI here. Hi, Chris over at Game Dad. You don't have one of these, I do. Okay, Zoomer. Anyways, running joke here on the channel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a close-up look at this and we're gonna try it out. Now, one of the things I've talked to the person who developed it. I do have essentially the Tower of Power here. And for those who aren't familiar with what the JVC XI is, it's essentially, think of a Sega CD with a Sega Genesis all built into one. And it can actually use the 32X, except for with this. The 32X basically disabled the Sega Master System pass-through on it, so essentially we'll have to bypass the 32X. So we're gonna check this out and we're gonna see how it plays because uh, this could save me some space here. No, I'm not getting rid of my Master System, but it may wind up in storage for a while. Let's take a closer look. So here we have the Master Drive itself, and as you can see, it is really simple in its design. Now, it is designed just to play cartridges. You aren't going to be able to play the, for lack of a better term, the hue cards through this. Now, on the front of it, you do have the Master Drive logo with Sonic. This is a uh, pause button right here. Uh, the solder joints and everything, these look like they are handmade. They look pretty decent. That side clearly says back. This doesn't say front, but if that's the back, this has got to be the front. Now, <clears throat> you will go ahead and just connect. Like, I've got a standard Master System game here. It plugs in just like so. It is a tight fit, I will say, on the pins on the cartridge. Um, I wouldn't say it's a death grip, but it is a tight grip. Now, to connect this to your system because of the way the Master System works and the uh, Genesis or the Mega Drive and the 32X, you can't go through a 32X. You basically have to go straight into the system. Now, uh, what we're gonna do at this point, that this is pretty much all that there is to it. Now, I do wish that there was a case or something like that for it. I'm gonna see if I can't design something and 3D print it. But I just wanna see, how does this play? Does it play on clone systems? And uh, yeah, will this save me some space on my, uh, basically my display stand that I have here? Let's get testing. Trying a little bit of a different setup here. I'm actually using my Samsung flat panel HD 1080p monitor here. You can actually see it behind me as well. Don't know if that's gonna be distracting or not. Again, just trying something different. So here is our type and we are using our uh, six button controller from Retrobit.
graphics and sound and everything seem okay. No control issues that I can detect thus far. But so far, so good. And like I say, I'm not noticing any issues with the picture quality. It looks really, really good. Now, on this, my uh, XI is actually going through um, Insurrection Industry SCART cables. So, and then that's going into my uh, RetroTank 5X. Now, the flicker and whatnot that I'm seeing, that's on the system. That's on the game itself. That has nothing to do uh, with the converter. Got that one as well. Um, overall, yeah, I mean, I can't say that this feels any different than playing through my genuine master system. And that's pretty much the angle that I was looking for. And it's weird to think, too, looking at this, that this is just an 8-bit game. Sega d outdid themselves with games like this. The Master System itself is so overrated. Or, I'm sorry, underrated. Oh! Alright, we died on that one. So now what we're going to do, we're going to actually try one of my favorite games on the system of all time. And that's Wonder Boy. Now, one thing I just went to do, and it does not work, is the fact that the start button is not something functional on the controller itself. I can't just hit start to pause. That's what that button on the system itself is for. For those not aware, Wonder Boy, Adventure Island is basically what this is. Such an amazing, amazing game. Now... I thought that I should be able to jump higher, but maybe I can't. I could have sworn that he jumps higher than that. Well, we will try a wired controller after this just to be on the safe side. In fact, what we're going to do after this is we're actually going to test out a clone system. We're going to try out the, uh, um, the Hyperkin Retron 3 HD. Yeah, there's got to be something going on with his run, because it he couldn't even clear that. So we're going to restart, we're going to try a different system, and see if we still have the same problem. So here you can see display issues. So I'm not even going to bother to test out the controller on this. We're going to try a couple additional systems. So here is the Mega Retron HD, and it's doing the exact same thing as the Retron 3 HD did. Kind of a bummer. So this is all that we're getting out of the Mini Gen HD from Gamers Tech, and this is unplayable. At least the Retron 3 HD, while the colors were off, would display it along with the, um, the Mega Retron HD would also at least display a picture, even though it was off a little bit. So I would say clone systems, not so much. But what we're going to do is we're going to finish it up on the JVC XI using Double Dragon. Up next, we're gonna team up with Bimmy and Jimmy. We are gonna play a little bit of Double Dragon. Now, this looks a little bit like a darker red. Um, so, I was not expecting that. Now, I will say the uh, Master System version of Double Dragon much harder than the NES version that I'm more used to playing. As I just died right there. But I will say overall, I mean, this is not playing any harder or easier than what the, you know, what it would play through on the Mega Drive, I'm sorry, the uh, Master System. I knew that I was going to do that at some point here. Um, but overall, I got to say, sound is decent. The, uh, yeah, the color looks a little bit red hot here, um, or hot on the reds, I should say, probably more accurately. Sound is good. No lag or latency or delay or anything like that that's really screwing things up as far as I can tell. I just suck at this version of Double Dragon. I mean, I would say if you don't need the, the card support for under 30 bucks ship, this is not a bad option whatsoever. Um, you do lose some functionality and it does not appear to be compatible with clone systems. So that is something important to note, but... If you have genuine hardware, and yes, this is a JVC XI, so it's not a, a true Genesis, as it were, but it was a collab between JVC and Sega, so it's as close to the legit deal as you're going to get in a third-party system. Uh, overall, 
I would say this is working pretty decent. Now it's time to wrap things up and not die to adobo. A bobo? A boo boo? Hey a boo boo! So for around 25 bucks, what do I think of this adapter? It's actually really good, uh, at least if you're using it on original hardware. Clone systems, as you saw, not so much, but on actual Sega hardware or a JVC XI, it'll work without a problem. Now, I did figure out the issue with Wonder Boy, which is why it was playing behind me here. You have to hold down one of the two buttons to run to jump higher. Dummy. What can I say? I am so many games, I just forgot that that's what the trick was to jump higher, but I did verify, no issues there. Uh, the reds are a little bit hot, I will say that, but overall, no lag, no delay, no issues whatsoever, and it does have that convenient pause button on the front too, that if you did want to go ahead and utilize that, you can. I will have a link down below in a pinned comment if you want to go ahead and pick one of these up. Now, I've actually talked to the developer himself, nice guy, Helpful to the community, and it's one of those things that I'm glad to see something like this that I took a chance on actually worked exactly as I expected. Now, if you do want to see more as far as like when we picked up our JVC XI, our review of the retro button, six button wireless controller, and more, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastlemaniaGames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.